I'm Keith Warren. I'm a hunter, a fisherman. I'm throwing a big old bait because I'm looking for a big old fish. A conservationist. Oh, come on. A family man. And I'm proud to be a deer farmer. I'm taking a road trip and we're going behind the scenes of today's most innovative deer farmers and wildlife management operations in North America. This is Deer and Wildlife Stories. I'm Dee Murphy, the manager of Hurricane Creek Lodge, and when I heard that Keith Warren was coming to Alabama with his deer and wildlife stories, I thought that was a pretty cool idea. We got here just in the nick of time. This is Dee Murphy coming out here to get me. We got a doe in trouble. We were in Alabama, and we're gonna be touring deer farms up here in northwestern Alabama, but we gotta start out right now helping save a doe's life. We have a doe that we think that has impacted jaw, and we're gonna go darter and uh, clean it out. It's all part of being a deer farmer. Driving along the outside of the pen, trying to get close enough to this doe to take a shot, put a dart in her, put it down. The ADA is the Alabama Deer Association, and we've been a member for five or six years now since we've been in the deer business, and we really believe in it. It's a great organization to be a part of. We all need to be together, especially when it comes to part of any kind of political issues at any battles that we might have. Right here she is. Oh. Better get broadside first. Back, 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 back. Good shot. Good shot, good. All right. Good, good, good. Got, got the darn on. We're ready to go now. Well, you, it, it, typically in eight to ten minutes is, is what I've found, but eight to ten minutes and they're asleep. And so, uh, new dark? Yes, yeah, sir. Yeah, okay. Right, that's what I use. All right. Somebody got a watch? Look at this. <laughs> you got three men with no watch. <laughs> we'll know when she's asleep. We'll, we'll go hear. by the sun. Yeah, we go by the sun yeah. right now. <laughs> we'll know when she's asleep. We'll hear her. She sounds like my cameraman when she's sleeping. Yeah. <laughs> These guys are fixing to get real busy. I'm gonna tell you what they're gonna do. Okay, what they're doing now, sub Q, they're putting an IV in. Okay, they've inserted a needle in here to give her some fluids. It's hot outside. It got up close to 100 today. And so they're gonna give her some fluids. It's just underneath the surface of the skin. And as they're working on it, you're gonna see it start to bulge up like this because the fluid is going in through this needle underneath the skin. It's, the fluid is gonna be absorbed into the body. So it just keeps her well hydrated. What's impacted you all? Impacted, that means it's food. She's probably got a tear inside her mouth. And then she eats, she gets food down in the hole. And it goes up inside and uh, it can get really, really nasty. Okay, see that? Open up. Goodness gracious. See this? It's her food. Okay, that was food that's up inside there. Look at that. Gotta get this all cleaned out. I know it's not a fun job, but it's a job that has to be done when you're on a deer farm. And if you don't do it, a deer can get infected and die. I'm gonna let you put some of this uh, iodine, beta iodine on your glove. And, and then, then rub it all in there? Yes, sir. Give me some. Got it. See, and there's really no way to fix it. Just all you gotta do is clean it out and hope that Mother Nature fixes it herself. Give her an antibiotic, treat her for infection, clean out the best you can, and then watch her. Put her on the watch list. Okay. All right. Let's get her tongue out there. They're giving her injections right now. Vatril and Draxin are two unbelievable good drugs to give them. I'll be honest with you guys. It really didn't, it wasn't as bad as what I thought. You've done a good job, Keith. I've done that before. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're gonna wait about 30 to 45 minutes to hit them with a reversal drug. All right, like I said, we got here just in the nick of time, but you know what? I'm glad we were able to show you that. It's just another day in life of being a deer farmer. We'll have more from Alabama. Don't go anywhere. If you like the way our show looks on your television set, you're gonna absolutely love it when you see it in full HD online. And you can watch it on my website, 24 seven free of charge at keithwarren.net. Take a look and you'll see what I'm talking about. This program is dedicated to the men and women of the United States Armed Forces, past, present, and future. 
I knew when Keith came to Alabama, we had to visit a lot of farms, and I knew that was going to be a pretty tough task, but I knew he could handle that and knock it out with no problem. All right, I'm running a little bit late. Ding dong, anybody in there? Hello, is anybody in there? Hey, hey guys. In. Hey, Adam, how you doing? Good. How you Roger, doing? hi. How we doing? These are the Lynch's father-son team. Well, this is nice, golly, is it brand well, new? Brand new, just about, just brand new. We use it for one year. Obviously, y'all AI see the board on the wall. Yeah. And then what do they do? Yeah, we bring them right on up through here to the east division until they get to the handler there. That's where we do our business. Well, and what happens here, let me show you. The deer are in here, and they come through. They're going to wind up in here. Yeah. Okay, and as they wind up in here, we'll have this up. He's going to raise the floor up. They're going to come in, and then he's going to drop the floor out. And this goes up. And the reason why this goes up is because when you're working on deer in there, you keep them from kicking you, and they will kick, won't they? They will kick. <laughs> they will tear the hide off. And tell them what happens when they leave here. Well, they leave here, we drop them down, they go right out this door and right back out. Let's go out and see what you got. This is one of our holding pans. Oh man, Roger, this is nice. Now this is where they stay in here till they take a little nap before we can handle them. When they get done in here, going to sleep, you're gonna bring them back in here and that's when you're gonna impregnate them, right? Exactly. Show me some deer. All righty. So how many deer do y'all have total? 19. And uh, how long have y'all been farming? Three years. We started out with three bred doe. Ten of them, 19, is was fawns born this year. Oh, really? So tell me about these deer. Well, these are the only three bucks we have. Uh, we got one two-year-old and two yearlings in there. Okay. All these other pens, I mean, I know you've got does and fawns in. How are you breeding them, not just with that one guy? He'll cover all our does, that one two-year-old, back up to the AI. Let me ask you this. What was it about deer farming that caused you to want to get into it? Well. My dad's always took me hunting from an early age. I just love to watch them grow, the bucks, what they start and what they end up as. I enjoy it a lot. Yeah, they're, they're kind of addictive. Well, I appreciate y'all showing me around. Thanks for coming. Hey, Roger, thank you very much. I appreciate y'all showing Man, me around. Appreciate you coming. And yeah, we got lots of Alabama to cover and not a very long time to do it, so I gotta get. Northwest Alabama Hidden Valley Farms. This is Brock Palmer. And Brock, you've been a deer farmer for quite some time. And talk about this black cloth. Uh, somebody may look at it and think, well, that's kind of a mistake. It's something that's not supposed to be like that. But tell them it is supposed to be like that and why. I leave it loose like that to let the pressure off of the fence when the wind's blowing. And the cloth is up for predators and for the deer to be able to visually see that wire. If they take off running, they don't run into the fence. I notice you've got a hot wire down here and predator wire down here as well. Yes. And so, well, let's take a look at the pins. I okay. want to hear all about your deal. So tell me about your farm. How big is it? How many pins you have and how many deer you have? I've got 10 acres. I've got 55 deer and I've got nine pins here. So how long have you been deer farming and why did you get in it? Uh, I've been deer farming about six years and uh, about like everybody else, just couldn't get enough of seeing deer, being around deer, and, and when you see these little babies being born and growing up and running around, it's just something that's uh, phenomenal to be around. Are you a member of Nadifa? I sure am. Okay, and I know you're a member of the ADA. Yes. I think strength in numbers, uh, one voice. Everybody sticks together, there's more power with everybody holding together as one big group of deer farmers. Right here is one of the Armstrong boys. They're, they're twins. We got Kevin right here, and Kim's gonna be on camera in a little bit. And we're eating peanuts. This is deer food, but it's really good people food too. We're gonna take a look at their deer and go on here and see what they got. And uh, you know what? Peanuts are good. <laughs> Don't get us started. We're gonna have a red mouth eating peanuts. We need to have Dr. Pepper. <laughs> hey, we do. All right, let's go look at some deer. We got about 35 deer, including the babies. We've been doing it for 11 years. In the July, it's hot here in Alabama. Mm-hmm. About to get close to lunchtime. That's got to be Kim, your brother. Yes, sir. Keith Warren. How you doing, Kim? Good, sir. How you doing? I'm doing good. Nice to meet you. So you feed Chef A, too? Yes, sir. All right. Well, tell me about this doll right here. Bonnie, she's 11 years old. Um, she's been one of the ones we started with. 
She was bottle fed originally. She has really changed the demeanor and the character of all the other deer that are not bottle fed. She's kind of a mother figure to the rest of them. It is getting about lunchtime, don't you think? <laughs> it is. You can tell by her, she, she can tell it's lunchtime. Tell me about uh, the buck over there. That's a pretty nice looking buck. He is a two year old out of Bambi 727. Mm -hmm. He's got 29 points right now that we can see. Good mass, good characteristics. He's a gentle deer, too. You know, that made a big point. She sired a bunch of babies, as you can tell, and you can see. And Hopefully they'll be half as what he is, they'll be good deer. Yeah, I tell you what, he's an awesome deer, all right. What about the deer in this next pen? He is, uh, he's a two-year-old. He's <laughs> a son out of Prolex. And uh, more of a typical frame right now. He's got seven babies that he's sired right now. Hopefully everything goes good. Uh, we'll cross those up this fall and uh, see what we can come out with. Oh, you're gonna have something good. Anyone, anybody in the deer industry has heard of Rolex. Rolex yes. is a famous deer in the industry. He's an awesome deer, and obviously he throws real well. Yes. Well, they're beautiful, beautiful deer. We've been blessed. Okay, well, I got a lot of places I got to go in Alabama, but the next place I got to go is I'm buying y'all lunch. Thank you. We're going to buy your lunch. That'll work. I'm full of peanuts, <laughs> and I'm not going to eat the chaffee, so let's go lunch, boy. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay, dope. Thank you, Kevin. You're welcome. I appreciate it. I'm Blaine Armstrong, and I'm from Hamilton, Alabama, and I'm proud to be a deer farmer. Deer and Wildlife Stories is brought to you in part by Deer Guardian Misting Systems, DNA Solutions, and the North American Deer Registry, Four Canyons Ranch, the Hunter Heritage Foundation, Record Rack Deer Feeds, and by Southwest Fabricators, where quality goes in before the name goes on. We're here at Bucks and Bulls, and uh, gonna introduce you to Heath Butler here. Heath has been deer farming a long time here in Alabama. Hey Heath, how you doing? Hey Keith, nice to see you. Good to see you. Uh, okay, how many deer do you have, and how long have you been deer farming? We've been deer farming since uh, 1998, about 13 years now. We're up to about 74 head of deer, that's including our ponds. And you've been a member of the Alabama Deer Association for a long time, haven't you? Ever since it started, uh, ADA is good about helping People get involved in the deer industry, new people. Uh, they support what we do. We all like doing what we're doing. Uh, I started this as a hobby and now I do it as a living. Cool. Well, show me some deer. Let's go. So how many total pins you have? I have a total of uh, eight pins. Well, you have a little bit different deal going on here. These are three-year-olds and there's two-year-olds and yearlings in the next pen. Yes, sir. I've been going around different farms, as you well know, and you're doing something a little bit different. You have a different uh, program than other guys do as far as your genetics and the amount of northern in your herd. I want you to tell everybody about that. Well, just from my personal experience, the EHD has been really bad here on my farm. I can't, I can't speak for the other farmers in the state, but uh, I'm going just to South Texas genetics and breeding just because I think personally that they have a little more resistance to the disease. I appreciate you addressing that issue with the EHD in northern deer versus southern deer. I want y'all to know we're not uh, suggesting you change all southern or all northern. We, yeah. On our program, what we do, we go and we're sharing what the different people believe. And out here, Heath just believes that, hey, southern deer do better on his piece of property. Now, the guy right next door, he may think the northern do better, and that's cool. But that's the cool thing about deer farming, too. Yeah. We, we all are trying to do what's best for the deer. Well, you got some pretty ones, and they're all in the shade, just like we are. Yeah. Nice, pretty deer. I know you're not gonna believe this, but we're in a place called Frog Pond, Alabama, and this is Dr. Steve Hammock. And last April, something absolutely horrible happened here. Tell everybody about it and what it did to your farm. Uh, just four months ago, we had a F5 tornado just two miles south of here. We had 100 mile an hour winds right here. Destroyed part of our fence in our shade cloth. We were really lucky that we didn't have anything go down, and we're making some repairs and just getting everything ready for this fall. But y'all didn't lose any deer, did you? Didn't lose any deer, had no injuries of any kind. All right, show me some deer, big boy. All right. <laughs> you don't have to have a ton of money to do this. Now, to some people, this would be a ton of money, but tell them about, I mean, you're operating on a budget. We built the barn for less than $8,000 and put in the entire facility for $12,000. And uh, that includes the, the drop chute and everything. So we keep having the same saying, we're trying to run a million dollar operation on a 50 cent budget. 
We got our one-year-old bucks, our two-year-old bucks in separate pans, and we have one three-year-old buck that's in with the two-year-old. All right, when do you think they're gonna come out of velvet? When will they start stripping it off? Uh, plus or minus a couple of days, September 10th. Okay, that's kind of what my deer do too. By the, by the middle of September, it's over. All right, speaking of over, I'm running out of time. I gotta get, I got lots more farmers to meet here in Alabama. Thank you Enjoy, very much. Enjoyed you coming, appreciate it very much. We hear a lot of talk these days about prison overcrowding, and I think, yeah, prisons are probably a little bit too crowded. That's a fact. But you know what? If you sit there and think about it, you think, wonder about those guys and gals that are in prison. Were they ever attached to nature? Did they ever hunt and fish? Odds are they didn't. The reason why I say that is if kids go out and they hunt and fish, they just become better people. They become more connected with nature, more connected with their families, more connected with the environment, more connected with the world. And so the way I look at it, there may be too much prison crowding, you better believe it. But one way to stop that from happening in the future is spend time with your kids and take them outside. Like I said, they'll just become better people. For more information on the American Deer and Wildlife Alliance, please join us online at DeerWildlifeAlliance.org. This is Shannon McKinney. Shannon's been a deer farmer here in Alabama, well, before deer farming became a cool thing to be. Yeah, huh? absolutely. Before it was really cool. We, you know, as the family, uh, my father and I, we grew up just like most people that's in the deer farming business, love of hunting and fishing and outdoors. And, you know, we've had a deer permit since the, probably the mid 80s. There's a lot of farmers over here down south that are bringing in northern genetics and putting them in the herd. But there are issues, health issues, that well, obviously we, we want to do what's best for the deer. Absolutely. And everybody has an opinion on your deer. Why have you made the decision that you've made? I'm trying to raise a quality animal that's going to be resistant to, you know, the endemic diseases we have here, mainly, you know, EHD and, um, and blue tone. I don't spray or I have foggers or have a misting system and I don't vaccinate. I'd rather have my deer exposed to it naturally and maybe lose two to five on a really bad outbreak or a bad year and keep my herd resistant so that I won't have any bad losses as far as you know losing just numbers and numbers and numbers of deer. Obviously deer die, whether they're in the pens or whether they're out in the wild, deer die and they die of diseases. But the, and the deer out in the wild die of the exact same diseases that deer on the other side of that wire die of. Absolutely. It's, it's just when they die out here, People don't know about it. Mm -hmm. And so what we're able to do is deer farmers get, gather a lot of research, a lot of data from deer that are living in the pens and we know what to do to keep them alive longer and what not to do. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that uh, we have helped a lot of people with the free ranging herd. I think we've helped with a lot of information. Yeah, help them keep their deer decisions, no doubt. I know you've got your kids that help you a bunch. I do. How do you feel about deer farming? What does it do for the family? With farming and deer farming in particular, we're able to kind of nurture and grow that love of wildlife that we have, you know, my wife and I have, and whether or not they stay around the outdoors or live in a rural part of the country, they're still going to have skills that's going to go with them wherever they go and be beneficial to them. Well, let's go find your kids. I know they're bottle feeding. Yes, I have sir. Enjoyed they better be. Yeah, I've enjoyed this visit. Now let's go see the kids and go look at some more deer. Right. I'm Jordan McKinney. I'm from Vine, Alabama, and I'm a deer farmer. Deer and Wildlife Stories is brought to you in part by Game Management Software, the North American Deer Farmers Association, New Dart, Shock Effect Probiotics, and Keith Warren's Texas Hidden Springs Ranch, the best value for Texas trophy deer hunting. I'm Brock Palmer here in Hamilton, Alabama, and I'm proud to be a deer farmer. So how many pens do you have and how many deer? Uh, we have 18 pens right now. Fishing to build five more will give us 23, and then uh, we'll probably have a little over 300 head of deer right now. And how long have y'all been deer farming? Uh, we've been doing about five years. Uh, we've been AI and artificial breeding for three, going into our fourth year this November. So all these bucks we're looking at are a result of the artificial insemination? Yeah, most of them are, yes, yeah, right. I'll tell you what, it is amazing that when you start doing that, how you improve genetics. Oh, it's unreal, it really is. Yeah. So you all DNA everything, don't you? Yes. Well, these days in deer breeding, that um, DNA and, and, and all that's very important to selling these animals because it's all about the genetics now and the lineage and what they come out of. So we have everything, everything's DNA'd. So how long have y'all been AIing deer? Three years, going into our fourth season this November. It is amazing when you start AIing deer, what happens, huh? It is, it's crazy. Man, this is, this is pretty awesome. This is, uh, this is a very relaxing place to be. And um, this deer farming is a great thing. 
Yeah, deer farming is a relaxing thing to do. It's uh, but it can it can get to you sometimes, but it is very very relaxing. Days like this, late in the afternoon, man, you come up here and end of summer and see what you've grown. So it's uh, it's very rewarding, very rewarding. Yeah, the deer industry now is getting very very competitive, and uh, so you're having to breed with the best of the best, and. Um, so that's what we, we try to do the best we can. We're over here at the uh, Bucks and Bulls massage parlor. We're looking for the owner right now. I shouldn't have said that. Is this the Bucks and Bulls massage parlor? It is. Okay, all right. <laughs> I just, I thought it was. I need a massage bag. I need to find some air conditioning. We got get it that off, you. get that off. It is the end of July. We have something special right here. Look at this, we got a baby right here. Looks like it's probably a day old. I'm gonna pick it up if I can, if I can catch it. <laughs> Come it. I bet I can catch it now. I hope so. Nope. I guarantee that wasn't that's not a newborn. No. If that We're back at the airport, making it barely in time for a flight. We've had a crazy couple of days visiting all the farms here in Alabama, and I hope you enjoyed it. If y'all want to get a hold of any of the farms, all you need to do is get on our website, contact the Alabama Deer Association. And again, the ADA is not made up of just deer farmers. It's made up of deer enthusiasts. Log on to KeithWarren.net for 24-7 access to more information, more video, and full episodes. Reproductive services for deer and wildlife stories provided by Dr. Ray Favero's Whitetail Genetics.